and welcome to Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Fundamental Associate Architect Part 1 Training. This is a part one of two part training. You will learn fundamentals of Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, also known as OCI. You will learn about the components of Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Student will be able to build and manage virtual cloud network, also known as VCN. This training will prepare you for the part two of the certification training which is 1Z0932 exam. As this training is fundamental heavy, you should be able to survive from my personal experience in any cloud environment like Microsoft Azure, Amazon Web Services and Google Cloud. The point I'm trying to make here is if you're passionate and committed to do your part of the work, it will not be difficult. Yes, it will not be difficult to get certified as an associate cloud architect. And once you are certified, it will help you land a junior or starter cloud architect position with salary upward of 90,000 US dollars. This is a conservative estimate. So don't be on the sideline. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. Cloud infrastructure is the new frontier and can be said to be the next internet opportunity. Let's see how Oracle is ramping up their cloud war. They did announce they are going to add 12 more data center regions, predominantly in Asia. With this announcement, they aim to increase the breadth and depth of the cloud services. Also, they say the expansion is due to increased demand. They also mentioned they would hire 5,000 new employees to its cloud software business. This hiring is not going to be alone in the US, but it's going to be in Europe, Middle East, and Africa. This recent hires are not only going to be hardened professionals, it is also for recent college graduates. So they have opened the doors for junior and starter architects, student like you who's trying to get certified. So it means you would have a better chance of getting in than anyone without the certification. And the best part is Oracle is going to offer this recent hires with in-house training. So this is going to be a win-win situation for all involved. So this is the perfect time to get into this program. Finally, why you want to choose Oracle over other cloud providers? Oracle is the only company which owns and maintains the whole stack of the software, server, storage, network switches, everything. So there are no third party vendors involved. They own the servers, the machines, they own the software and they put everything together. So if you face any problems, you only have Oracle Corp to look towards and Oracle Corporation will back you up because they own all the components. Now, if you look at other cloud providers, their whole infrastructure has been stitched together with third party vendors. So if you face any problems, you are on your own. The cloud provider is not going to help you out here. Hope this helped you understand how Oracle Cloud is much superior over the other cloud provider. Oracle is not very high on that list of companies which are migrating computing of local service onto the global cloud. But now the database giant has started aggressively shifting its Fortune 500 customers to cloud. Major player watch their backs because Oracle is starting to push the buttons to convert customers to cloud. They built out massive data network which would keep scaling up to meet the user demand. Oracle has customers which are Fortune 500 companies. They are looking to migrate to Oracle Cloud from big banks, big manufacturers and even big cloud itself like Amazon. Amazon runs its internal cloud business which spends of 50 million US dollars increments. So does SAP and Salesforce use Oracle as their backend database. Even Oracle is promising anyone who migrates from AWS to Oracle Cloud will cut their costs to half or as much as 80%. Why Oracle Cloud and what advantages it has over other cloud providers? What does Oracle Cloud offer? So on high level, what they say, enterprise level high availability, predictable performance, maximize flexibility and security, leading hardware for a modern architecture, no more shadow IT. Objective for the certifications are, we'll go through the list, but in the part one we are going to cover getting started with Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, 
OCI. This is going to be around 4% of the exam questions. So we're going to do the describe the key features and components of OCI. We're going to work on explaining OCI concepts and terminology. Working with identity and access management, IAM service, which is around 8% of the exam questions. So we're going to work with the basic IAM concepts, explain resource locations, create compartments, users, groups, and policies, locate and view resource identifiers. Then we're going to move on to creating a virtual cloud network, VCN which is a major chunk, 10% of questions are going to be from there. Explain networking concepts and terminology. Describe a VCN and its components, everything which makes up the VCN. And we are going to create a VCN in OCI. We've got a lab for that. Then we'll move on to launching bare metal and virtual compute instances. So that covers 7% of the exam questions. We'll describe the components of compute service, including shapes, images, and custom images. We're going to have a lab to create and manage a compute virtual machine uh, instance. We're going to move on to creating and managing block storage volumes. Again, 7% will be covered there. We'll explain the difference between a block storage and object storage and how you're going to manage the block storage volumes. Then we'll move on to managing, creating and managing object storage. We're going to describe the features and benefits of object storage. We're going to create and manage buckets and how we're going to upload objects to those buckets. Then we'll move on to load balancer, which is part of a virtual network. This is around 3%, but this, though it has a low number of questions, but it's a very important topic to understand how the whole network works. So we're going to talk about the terminology and concepts. We're going to set up a load balancer in a lab. Then we'll move down to setting up a domain name system, which is 5%. Uh, we're going to discuss the concept. We're going to describe the features and benefits, why you need a domain name system. We're going to create and manage one DNS records. Finally, we're going to create launching a database instance, which is 8%. That's a major chunk. We're going to describe the features, benefits, and use cases, why you need to have a database service. And again, we're going to have a lab to create and manage a database instance. So we're going to cover around 55% on this training. And once you are confident, once you go through the study schedule and get comfortable with this, then you can sign up for the part two training, which we can go through. It's going to be advanced database services, which is 10%. It's going to look at advanced features like data guard, uh, primary and standby databases, bring your own licenses, data encryption, uh, real application clusters, how we uh, database could have multiple instances for high availability, and Exadata, which is uh, Oracle engineered uh, machines, where the storage, the compute, and the database and the network, everything is in one box. Then we'll learn how to migrate databases to cloud from your on-premise uh, data center. We are going to look at the advanced networking concepts, uh, manage your cloud network components such as VPN, Fast Connect, multiple VNIX, and IP addresses. We'll ev evaluate the different options of connecting to the internet. This is going to be around 7%. DevOps. We are look, going to look at the DevOps tools like Terraform, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure CLI, which uh, you will see a glimpse of that in the part one training, and uh, Software Development Kit SDK.
will con configure Terraform Oracle Cloud Infrastructure CLI. Again, we are going to do this in part one. So you should get an idea of those. And SDK will do in the advanced the part two. Then we'll move on to the advanced identity and access management, design, federation, and various identity providers. So we're going to look at the difference between a federation and uh, uh, going without a federation providers. We're going to create instance principles with dynamic groups, uh, DG. And finally, which is the major chunk, it's we're going to architect a high availability HA using OCI. We're going to develop a system which is high availability behind a load balancer and and which is going to span across multiple availability domain. So if one of them goes down, so one of the data center goes down, you still have the other one to work with. Then we are going to Architect Disaster Recovery DR using OCI. How we can come out of a lost data center and how we're going to restore that. We could do design for security using OCI. And we're going to identity the use, identify the use cases for OCI, OCI Classic, and Cloud at Customer. Why you would need to use all the different uh, uh, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Why would you need an uh, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure second generation or the classic or cloud at customer? So this is going to be around 45%, but this is going to be more advanced. So you definitely need to take this first part of training and get very comfortable and confident. So which come, so the part two should be very easy for you once you understand the fundamentals of the Oracle Cloud infrastructure. So let's move forward and uh, get into the training.